Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another Valheim video. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to find and defeat the fourth boss in Valheim known as Moda. Now Moda is a large female dragon which you will find in the mountain areas of the map. To find where her location on your map is you need to go up into the mountains and look for these stone ruined buildings and look for the glowing Vegisir. I apologise if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but the Vegisir tablets which will give you her location. Similar to the kind of ones that you'll have found in the Black Forest for the Elder and possibly in the swamps for the Bone Mass. So all you need to do is look for those and register her location and then you know where you need to go. Now, in order to actually summon her, you will need to go to her location with three dragon eggs. Now, to find the dragon eggs, you basically just need to run around in the mountains for a little bit. You will find them pretty easily. Even here, not far from where her location was, you can see that there is a drake, and not far from where that drake was, there actually was a dragon egg. So, really not hard to find these at all. They do, however, weigh an incredibly large amount. So if you're doing it solo, it's going to take a couple of sort of runs up to her altar in order to summon her. If you've got two people, you can do it in a couple of runs, like me and my partner did here. And if you're doing it as a group, one of you can take an egg each and that will work really well. Having the extra weight capacity belt that you can buy from the trader is really going to help you here. Now, in terms of gear, what we ran with was the wolf armour set that you can craft once you have gone into the mountains and got silver and wolf pelt and all of the things that you need. And then we were running with the Draugr Fang bows, which I believe are currently the best bow in the game. And she was very easy to take down. We were using poison arrows mainly, and I used a few needle arrows. And we found that she was just incredibly easy to fight. If you've done the bone mass fight, well, you will have done the bone mass fight by now if you are trying to take this boss on. But if you have done it and you're looking to go and do this one, this one is an absolute walk in the park compared to the bone mass fight. In terms of food, I was running with serpent stew, sausages and carrot soup. But you could do it pretty easily with just just enough food to keep your health up. You can stay at range and pretty much avoid all of her attacks. I decided I wanted to go in and do some close-up melee attacks just for some added fun. But we managed to do this all the way through with no deaths. In terms of attacks, she does an attack where she will fire ice at you from the sky. So avoid that because that does hurt. She will on the ground breathe ice, like ice fire if that makes sense. Um, which will freeze you, however, if you run with frost resistance potions like we did, then it doesn't really affect you too badly. On the ground, she will also do a bite attack and a swipe attack, both of which will hurt a little bit, but not that much. Like I said, compared to the previous boss fight, which is the bone mass, this is an absolute walk in the park. We did this in not very long at all, and yeah, like I said, first run, no deaths, and just doing it with the two of us. You could very easily do this single and if you were in a group I expect you could do it very very quickly and yeah it's definitely a boss fight we're gonna do again because it's a, quite a fun boss fight and also what she drops is very useful. So what she's going to drop for you is her trophy which you can use on the sacrificial altar and also some dragon tears. Now the dragon tears are what you need to craft the artisan table and the blast furnace. And the blast furnace is what you use to smelt the black metal that you get from the fuelings or we goblins as we call them that we find in the plains. So that is going to be really, really useful. The artisan table also gives you the ability to craft the windmill and the spinning wheel and just, yeah, everything that you basically need to progress if you got to this point. So easy boss to take on. I wouldn't hesitate going to do it again. And yeah, like I said, we were quite geared up with having the Draugr Fang bows and everything. I expect you could do it with the Huntsman bow if you really wanted to try that. Because like I said, it's quite easy to just keep her at range and just shoot her. And that's really all you need to do. And you can quite easily avoid getting hit like most of the time. And because there was very few enemies around this point that we had, we found this incredibly easy. Compared to the Bone Mass fight where we had the slime, the blobs, the skellies, the draugr, 
everything attacking us as well as the boss this was just a walk in the park we had like two wolves attack us at one point but that was really easy to deal with and yeah it was just like i said a very very easy boss fight but very fun and very pretty as you'll notice as the fight goes on the sky turns a very 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 vibrant shade of red and it is just really cool looking so she's all in all a very easy boss to fight like i said she gives you some pretty neat stuff and that's stuff you're going to need to progress through the game food wise i would recommend serpent stew lox meat normal cooked meat carrot soup uh if you've got anything like that you're going to be pretty set lox meat especially is going to be really good if you can get some of that and the serpent stew will really really help but the carrot soup we also found while it doesn't give you that much health it's really useful for the stamina because of shooting the bows all the time and also needing to dodge her attacks but it's very very easy like i said if you're trying to do it single person i expect you'd be able to do it with no problems at all something i recommend doing is what we did and setting up a portal nearby we actually put it in the stone building that was near to her location so that you can go through and repair your bow quickly and come back which is what i actually had to do which is where you'll notice there is a segment that i have trimmed out which was me running through the portal and coming back with a fully repaired bow because you are going to be using your bow an awful lot so it's going to get drained on its actual durability so in terms of the power that she gives you once you have sacrificed a trophy, she gives you an ability where you can get constant tailwind when sailing. Now this is going to be really really handy if you're trying to explore the map more, which we have been trying to do and having that power is just so, just, just so helpful. It's much more helpful than the Elder's woodcutting ability we found. And yeah, so combined, having one of us that has the bone mass, one of us that has Ikthyr's stamina power, and one of us that has the tailwind power, we're pretty set at the minute to go and do pretty much anything. So this is, like I said, it's going to be pretty easy if you want to do it. Much easier compared to the bone mass fight, you'll find this one a walk in the park. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I will stop rambling now about everything that you need for this particular fight and i'll just let you watch the fight and what you actually get from it i will show off in the, at the end i'll show off sacrificing the trophy to the altar i'll show off the artisan table and i'll show you the dragon tears that she drops so you'll see all of that and anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it any questions please feel free to drop them in the comments i always try to answer any questions that you guys have and try and help you out so don't don't be worried about asking me any questions i will always try to help thank you so so much for watching